So whenever it comes to inset, inset always requires that I give a small talk about the integrals of how it works so that you can best understand how to get a good experience with it. And one of the fun things I love to talk about with inset is how you can just have a itty bitty cut in some area and it will affect the success of your inset from that moment forward for the rest of that mesh. So we have this little cut here. We have this cube. If we select both of these, we can just go under booleans in the queue and just choose inset. And notice that the inset did not work out. And so we can dial this back in order to, you know, kind of get something that's actually visual and that we see on screen, but the mesh is so deformed and tore up that it's just not gonna work out for us. And so you as a user might be wondering, hey, why does it look so bad? And more importantly, how can I do something about this to actually get a uh, more manageable result to continue on with my work? So let's take a moment and uh, analyze this. So if we press forward slash, we can take this into local mode. And you know, this is where the ever scroll troubleshooting portion begins. So if we just shift click, uh, we can jump this in through the state. So this is the mesh un unmodified. And then we see there's a difference for a boolean and then there's a solidification, and then it's given this intersect. But where it goes wrong is this boolean that's been given. So this boolean isn't being taken into account, it, taken into account by the um, by the inset at all. So it's not actually necessary. Let's roll back one, and let's just press A to toggle that, and then let's do solidify, and then let's do intersect, and let's click and come out of local mode with forward slash. And now we see that we get a much better result. So there's a technical way that you can deal with inset in order to get this thing under control, to be able to manage any sort of geometry. But just know that if we were to have this single boolean on, the result can be night and day. And this is just part of how Blender works and more importantly, how it's part of how inset works. And I'm always contemplating how inset could be made better, but really I'm getting off on, on a tangent. But the most important part of this whole thing is that inset now has support for basically slashing. So that means that at this moment, I could take this piece and if I were to just go under my settings and just, you know, I could change it to a join, but if I were to change it back to inset, there's actually an F9 option in here I can choose for something called inset slice. So all of these lessons that I just taught about how you can manage your shape, you will definitely doubly need to take them into account when it comes to inset slice, because now a slice has been made of this mesh but we still have problems with this mesh. So we want to press Q, go into ever scroll, which will automatically bring you back your last boolean that you had up. And then from here in the modifier panel, we can just disable that loan modifier and we have a very beautiful slice coming out of the surface. And slice is just fine in itself. This was something that was on the whiteboard for the longest time, so long that it became what I call dry ink. So I'm happy to see that this finally got resolved. In fact, this will also be coming to the next version of Box Cutter, where users will be able to perform inset slicing, where basically you get a very narrow slice off of the surface that's actually contoured to it. So here you're seeing me use it in sort of a uh, kind of boxy formation. However, if I were to press Control N and make a new file, we can press Q, go under Mesh Tools, and choose Sphere Cast, one of my favorite ways to turn a cube to a sphere. We'll press Control 4 just to raise our sub D up to four. And let's also sharpen this, except we don't want to sharpen it because it will crease the edges. We just want to mark it as smooth and also turn on auto smooth while we're looking at this. We'll shift A, add a cube, and let's just bring it out. And you might be wondering why I'm using hard ops to do all these booleans instead of box cutter. And it's because hard ops booleans definitely have their added benefit of being a lot more technical versus box cutter where we try to simplify it to a simplest term. So here we are performing our inset. We'll press F9 and deal with our thickness. And from here, we'll choose inset slice. And if we press Alt Z, we can see through and see that we've created a contoured slice based on the surface of the inset. And this is where the fun really just gets started. So if we were to shift D, bring this out, we can select both of these, press Q, choose difference. And we have a shape kind of happening here. And as we scale it, we get more and more um, of this shell just taken away, which is always fun to see. We'll just press one to remove any part of our collections that isn't the main one. And I'm just going to bring in a cube, scale it around, fit it where I want, bring it out. You know, we don't want to penetrate it fully always. We could press Q, ever scroll, roll, roll the wheel just to get our cutter back. 
In fact, with ever scroll, it's defaulted to give you your last cutter on first scroll. So you don't even have to roll the wheel a single time. It will automatically give you your last cutter, just showing a little bit about how, how great ever scroll is. So we're gonna control click rail array in order to rail array this around on the Z. Press X a couple of times in order to change the axis. And it's just not gonna fly. So we're gonna need to apply the scale. And then let's control click radial array. And now we can press X until it ar arrays around the correct axis. And we're using a 3D cursor in this case, but just like that, you're able to create really interesting shapes just using radial array and the new inset shell feature. However, we're calling it inset slice. So I'm just going to shift D duplicate this in edit mode, of course. So that way we still keep the control of our radial arrays. And we'll just bring that out and just set it up like so. And that's really just the start of getting started when it comes to inset slice. So to show it one more time in action, if you were to shift D duplicate uh, your cube, you can press Q and under booleans, there's an option for inset outset. And first you wanna go in and adjust your inset to be just right because visually you need to be on top of this. And then from here, you can choose inset slice. One of the things I regrettably um, not, was not able to get taken care of in this particular update was the ability for us to bull shift into it. So just letting you know, let's say we delete this shape and then we bring back ever scroll on this and we decide to shift bull. So by rolling the wheel, I'm able to roll through possible types of booleans. Here I'm looking at an outset where I could press T and adjust my thickness. I can roll the wheel, go to inset, press T and adjust the thickness of that as well. However, there is no ability to get an inset slice. And so this is something that I found to be a bit of an oversight. However, we'll just need to double back for that in the future. However, more than likely the easiest way at this time in order to shift into uh, an inset slice, if you're the type of person who's trying to do all these sort of uh, large changes after the fact is you would just select your target Q shift bull and just roll down to inset. And then using the F9, you can of course get your thickness just right, but there will be an option in the F9 for inset slice. So this is a kind of lesser used option, but just letting you know that it's not one of those things that you'll be able to shift into like you normally would. It's something that is exclusive to the F9 due to the uh, types of behaviors and newness of the system in box cutter and hard ops at this time.